did every one Jimmy Lee wrote. It was an amazing collaboration, and that went on for 10 years. So that, uh, as you point out, Leonard, he became a real star. He became a world figure because they showed in Japan, <coughs> China, wherever. And Hitch loved it when they showed it in Japan because they would read, read his comments, they would put it on the screen perpendicularly. <laughs> and Hitch liked the fact that they read this way. <laughs> <laughs> had a way of coming up to you in the morning and saying, you sent for me. I said, no, 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 Hitch, I didn't send for you. I... He's the boss. You don't send for the boss. <laughs> but he loved that surprise element in all his relationships with people. And I remember a cameraman asking him, well, were you doing saboteur, Jimmy, uh, uh, Joe Valentine, great cameraman, laid out a whole shot and then said to Hitch, would you like to look at the shot to the camera, Mr. Hitch? And he said, oh no, dear boy, I've looked for a camera before. <laughs> I, I, mea culpa, I, I left out of my, my introduction of Norman that and if you don't know this, I want to make sure everybody realizes that his first encounter with Mr. Hitchcock was playing the title role in Saboteur. He's the one who's dangling off the statue. Well. So if you weren't impressed before, <laughs> with Norman, I hope you are now. Now the film we're about to see, The Lady Vanishes, uh, was written by uh, a <coughs> wonderful writing team, uh, Frank Launder and Sidney Gilliatt. Uh, who went on to produce and direct and write their own films uh, within just a few years. I'm sure their career got a big boost from the success of this one. Uh, but obviously they were attuned to, uh, to Hitch's sensibilities, and they seem to have collaborated quite well. Uh, do, you, uh, do you remember Hitchcock talking about his British films, his British period at all? Did you ever have opportunity to, to talk with him about those films? Curiously, Leonard, he never talked about these two British films, <coughs> The Lady Vanishes and The 39 Steps. But it was with The 39 Steps and The Lady Vanishes, two perfect films, mm -hmm. that Hitch rose and arrived at being at the top of the British film industry. He became the most famous director <coughs> in England, and he had made with these two pictures, two perfect films. Yeah. And while the quality of his work changed in the course of his being in America, and he made beautifully made films, he never topped the perfection which he did those two films in England, mm -hmm. which were two films before he came to America. He made one other film in England called Jamaica Inn. And then he came to America and his first picture was Rebecca. But he never topped the perfection of 39 Steps and The Lady Vanishes. Now The Lady Vanishes, if I, if I may, The Lady Vanishes was made under the most difficult conditions. The stage was only 90 feet long, and they had everything happening in the stage. And then he had all those trains which you will see, which are toy trains. And I once said to Hitch, didn't that worry you? He said, doesn't matter. I said, but they're supposed to be real trains. He said, doesn't matter. <laughs> he knew in telling his story that he could convince the audience <coughs> in the story, even though you can see that they're toy trains. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're involved enough in the characters mm -hmm. and in the and in the, the, the progression of the of the story, 
you'll forgive you know, rear screen projection, you'll forgive miniatures, you'll forgive all of that kind of thing. I find. And uh, I hope the audience will feel the same way. Uh, two of the characters, by the way, the, the two running this sort of amusing Greek chorus characters in this film, played by Basil Radford and Naunton Wayne, were created by Lager and Jip and Gilead, were uh, greeted with such enthusiasm, especially by British audiences. They're playing two, two, two silly twits, <laughs> two silly British fellows, that they became sort of minor stars and, and appeared in several subsequent films it, as the same character. <laughs> including Night Train to Munich and some other stuff. Leonard, you bring up a wonderful point about Hitchy Schumer. These two actors were straight actors. They were not comics. They were very serious, straight actors. It was Hitch who put them together and made a comedy team. <laughs> <laughs> Just so. Schumer. Just so. Exactly so. Why do you think... Uh, what do you think is the appeal? You told me you, re you recently watched 39 Steps again, as did I. Uh, and I just fell in love with it all over again. What, what would you summarize as the qualities that make these British films so special and so endearing? There was a technical mastery. If you wanted to know how to shoot a film, look at the 39 Steps. I say to young people going to film school, forget it. Look at the 39 steps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every shot in it, every camera setup, every move in it is perfection. And you know, Hitch had a saying, camera logic. It should have camera logic. And I asked him one day, I said, what do you mean by camera logic? He said, the camera should be exactly where it should be to tell the story. And that's what he did and does to perfection, particularly in the 39 Steps 